Hello friends, welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. My name is Wezi Nyaniwa Sosola, your usual host. Today I would like to talk about a subject that I've been considering for quite a while. I've been thinking about it. How do I address this subject? This subject concerns the church. So, I'm coming from the school of thought whereby I don't really believe that we need to be washing dirty laundry in the public. I believe that if there is some disagreements, as the scripture says, uh, in the church, you should sit down as a church and um, uh, discuss the particular disagreements, resolve within the confines of that church. Uh, That's why I've taken my time even to talk about this particular subject. But today I just felt convicted that talk about this subject, address this subject. Many people may be going through it. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm here uh, to talk about this particular subject. Yes, I hope it will be helpful to other people as well. So today I just want to talk about the issue of church hurt, church hurt, whereby members may be hurt in the church because of actions of other members actions of leaders you would find that some members in the church are getting hurt they may talk about it they may not talk about it they may just remain silent other people may even reach a point of leaving the church just find that somebody has just disappeared from the church and you don't know what has caused their disappearance yeah sometimes it may be because of church hurt so in the case of church hurt sometimes People may just look at another member in the church and judge them. Stereotypes. It affects the way even you act towards that person. It affects the way you talk, you speak to that person. It affects the way you respond to that person. Because you've got personal prejudices, you've got personal stereotypes, you have created your own image, your creation of that person. In your own head so that's where typically church head comes from don't judge a person give them the benefit of the doubt learn them people are different we have got diverse people in this world God has created each and every person in a very unique way a unique way no two persons are alike People are totally different, different. Other people are extroverts, other, others are introverts. Others talk a lot, others don't talk a lot. Others like to associate much, others don't like to associate much. So we need to come to that position of accepting people the way they are. And that's even one thing that I'm trying to train myself, that when I look at a person, I should pray that God teach me how best do I understand this particular individual, this particular person whom you love so much. How do I act towards them to help build them to the glory of God? Because it's not, it should not always be about me, me, me how I feel, but it should more so be about God, giving glory to God, and also considering other people how they feel. I think that's what life should be about, because people are valuable. Therefore, when you are looking at another person, don't make judgments. Value them. Value them. Now, Today, I just want to talk about some of the ways by which I've experienced the church hate in my life experiences uh, working in the Christian com- with the Christian community, associating with the Christian community. How have I experienced the church hate? I do realize that whenever one or two people are gathered, there can always be conflict. Whenever there is a community, whenever there is people, Basically, there will always be conflict, there will always be misunderstandings, but that's not what I'm talking about. And these are particular instances that have really stuck to my mind that, wow, that's what I want to share about. You know, those neat greetings that happens in life, that are part of life, they happen today and tomorrow you forget about it. But these particular instances, really, they were about to transform my perception of the church. They were about to, they were about to transform my perception. That's what I, I would like to address now. So, what happened was like, I was a young woman, a young lady, whether it was a young girl at 24 years old, when I got married to my husband, I was coming from a different church, I joined his church, 
he was I was living in a city different city and he was staying also in a different city so I had to move from the city I was staying going to the city where he was staying and by this time really the church head that I experienced I mostly attributed to cultural shock it was just an issue a mere issue of cultural shock cultural differences that's what I attributed to. I don't want to blame anybody because of this. It was just a cultural shock. Because coming from the city, I'm going to this particular town. It was about the same time where other people were not comfortable enough to wear trousers, were not comfortable enough to wear jeans. So I went there as a young girl. I'm coming from this city. I would wear my, my dresses, which were slightly below the knee slightly below the knee i never wore anything that was above the knee i always trained myself to wear something that was on the knee or slightly below the knee so i could wear my skirts my suit to the church not knowing that people were noticing there in the church how can dare she how dare she wear like this sometimes i would wear a trouser at my home or in town i would wear a trouser i wasn't wearing a trousers at church but i would wear it elsewhere and i would meet people from the church there but then this was causing some reaction from people from the church how dare she wear a short skirt at church and yet this skirt was just below the knee <laughs> but somehow that's why I'm saying it was an issue of cultural shock. So because of this, they made judgments about me. Maybe that I wasn't holy enough to their expectation, that I wasn't a righteous woman, that I wasn't a godly woman. So a lot of things were happening because of that. There is a time when I, I could meet leaders in town. We are crossing paths. I would smile. I would recognize that this is my leader in church, my female leader, that is um, women leader because I've experienced most of this church head from women my women colleagues so I would meet my women leader in the streets of town I would smile at them trying to strike a conversation but you will find that the person is just passing by me not wanting to talk to me but it was just like somebody not wanting to associate with you when you meet um, elsewhere maybe in town they don't want you to be seen with them or whatever uh, and I realized that it's just because of the judgment they're feeling as if I'm not whole enough uh, in their eyes so yeah this is one of the ways where I experienced church head I was like wow wow this is my leader and they can't even talk to me and I was 24 a new member of the church but I was still going there I said God you know my heart God you know my heart that's what I said to myself and I kept on going to the church there was a time when a man came to my house and this man was one of the part of the church leadership so i'm not sure whether he was sent by the church or i'm not sure whether he came from out of his own volition but he came to my husband i prepared some tea they sat on the uh, the, the dining table i left the men to chat then after he had left my husband started sharing with me what they were discussing and basically when this man came he was talking to my husband to rebuke me the way i dress why is your wife wearing trousers why is your wife wearing short skates short dresses but this you must understand that from the culture where i was coming from from the city where i was coming from wearing trousers was normal wearing jeans for women was normal it wasn't uh, inappropriate in any way and even the skirts and the dresses that I was wearing were up to the knee it was below the knee slightly so it wasn't a thing um, from where I was coming from and my husband also understood that so he actually told me that don't worry about this thing it's just cultural shock it's just cultural shock so I'm sure people will get used to this type of life and every time you are in church you are always really conscious that somebody is looking at you or is thinking of you in one way or with the other in a certain way so that's what was happening and it can really affect you when you see that there are groups maybe they are looking at you they are blah 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 it can really affect you again there was a time when one leader woman leader stood in front of the church and made an announcement may all the wives of leaders stay behind so i was the wife of a leader i stood behind because my husband was a deacon so i just wanted to hear what is it that they want to talk to us i wanted to associate with the other women i wanted to hear whatever they want to equip us with 
But when we gathered together, about 15 of us, all they were talking about, you would literally perceive that they are targeting one or two or three individuals in the whole entire group. They have called for a meeting for wives of leaders, but in the whole meeting, they are trying to mock two or three individuals. And in this particular church, most of the people were small business owners, and some of them were housewives. Not many people were working class in the office. It was only two or three of us. And they made the whole meeting about the three of us. Some of you, how you are dressing? Oh, you know, we've also worked before. Eh? You know, I've worked before. I used to carry a handbag. I used to go to the office. But this is not how the working class act. Eh? This is not how they're working. And you'd literally see that the whole meeting is about two or three individuals. And I'm like, why not just call me aside or the two or three of us who are working class women talk to us how you would like to see us acting instead of hiding behind the wives of leaders. Stay behind. We want to talk to you as if you were trying to address all the wives of leaders. But in fact, you're just targeting and bullying two or three individuals in the particular group. And everyone was just like looking at us. Looking at us. And it was a typical bullying behavior that was being displayed there. Just targeting two or three people. I've also worked before. And this is not a new concept for me. I know how to act at the office. So it's not like you have to wear short skirts or trousers. I mean, a lot of things. And I was like, this is not church-like. This is not Christ-like behavior. This is not Christ-like behavior. And this particular behavior continued until the time when the church changed pastors. We, we decided as a family to go for a holiday elsewhere. And it was years after this pastor had left. And coincidentally, wherever it is that we went for a holiday is where this old pastor had moved to. So... While there, my husband made a suggestion that let us go and visit our old pastor. Then I said, okay, fine. I don't have a problem. I'm fine with that. Let's go visit the, uh, our old pastor. We bought some gift. We went to the house. We started chatting. We started conversing. The conversation was going well. But while we were chatting, the Maibusa, the pastor's wife, made a comment. And that comment really shocked me. She said, I never thought your marriage would last. So she was talking as if it was something like a funny comment, like it was a lighter moment, like a joke or whatever, what have you. But I took it seriously. So how, how can it even stick to come to her mind to think that this couple will not last? How would you really conceive those kinds of ideas, those kinds of thoughts for a young couple, a couple that have just gotten married, and you are thinking in your heart, ah, they will not last, they will not stay together. To the point that when we visited them, it started coming out. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And the mouth had started speaking whatever it is that she had been thinking the whole time. I never thought you would stay together up to now. I never thought your marriage would last. But it was one of those shocking moments that caused the church head. Now, what is my advice to somebody who may be facing church head in so many ways? One thing that I would like to say is that it's okay to set boundaries. So you can choose to set boundaries with certain individuals, not creating an enmity, just setting boundaries to protect your faith. You can choose to, to save in another kind of environment. This is how I want to save so that I should also protect the faith. I should protect the church, whatever. But if you are matured enough, you think that you can deflect all that. You think that you can stay right there. Then it is that you stay right there as long as it does not affect your reaction now towards those people. You are not reacting in a certain way. You are not acting in a certain way. You are not speaking in a certain way. You are not being provoked in a certain way. If you can handle all that, in the context, then stay there, right there, where you are. It's okay to do all that. But one thing also I want to remind you is that whenever they are judging you, whenever they are provoking you, they are holding stereotypes, they are holding prejudices, just know that it's not you who is at fault, but it's them. 
it speaks more to their character than it does to you. It speaks more about them, who they are in Christ, who they are as individuals, where the level of their faith, than it does speak about you. Okay? Then it does speak about you. I'm not talking that we should be closed-minded and not listen to criticism. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Constructive criticism is always welcome. And even people should be mindful of the delivery of that criticism. Because as Christians, we are supposed to learn, we are supposed to grow in our Christian faith. Nobody is perfect. We are all in, on the journey. We are being sanctified. But we are, there are some other times when it's just a judgment, pure judgment, baseless judgment. It speaks more of their character and not yours. It speaks more of their character, not yours. So I would like to close with a verse uh, from the book of uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 31. This is the golden uh, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would love them, do unto you. That's the golden rule. Whenever you are trading people, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Luke 6, verse 31. I hope this has built somebody. I hope this has encouraged somebody. I hope this has taught somebody. Please comment in the comment section below. If you've been a victim, maybe, of a bullying behavior from the church in the church context, or you've been a perpetrator of such behavior you've learned, just comment in the comment section below, or you disagree with my perception of the whole uh, church head subject, comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this particular subject. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Thank you so much, friends. Stay blessed.